Hi, I'm Sayyajita. Today I'm making two dishes based on one unlikely ingredient, beetroot. Beetroot galotti kebabs and beetroot paneer kofte in a white cream. Both use the same basic wheat and paneer mixture. For the beetroot galotti kebabs, I wanted to have the same characteristics as the original meat galotti kebab, which is a smoky flavor and uh, melt in your mouth texture. I do think that these kebabs have achieved that. Beetroot paneer kofte are beautiful red balls floating in a white yogurt and cream based gravy, which you can make in just 10 minutes. A treat for your eyes and a treat for your palate. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the galoti kebabs. I'm roasting the beetroots in a cast iron kadhai and going to charm them all over so that they will have a nice smoky flavor. Lightly brushing the beets with the ghee further enhances the smokiness. They must however cook all the way through. This takes about half an hour or so. You can do this ahead of time, I mean it doesn't have to be done right at the time when you are uh, cooking. You can either use an air fryer or you can do it on a barbecue grill or just steam them in a pressure cooker as I have done for the kofta. Okay, they're done finally and they have passed the butter knife test. It slides right through. Cover and let rest for about 5 minutes. This helps loosen the skins. So besides the beetroot, these are the things we need for our kebab mixture. Onion, garlic, green chilies, ginger, some whole dry spices and um, the paneer of course. Nothing needs to be chopped fine but the bigger it is, the longer it will take to fry. So that's a trade-off you can make. I actually fried the onions for the kofte first, so the kadai looks used. Uh, there's no need to wash it. That little bit of smokiness that will give is always welcome. Adding the whole, whole spices and fry for about 30 seconds until um, they give out a nice aroma. We're just going to fry this in some ghee until it's cooked. The salt helps the onions cook faster by releasing their moisture. Cover periodically for about 30 to 40 seconds. This basically speeds up the cooking process of the onions. While the onions are frying, I have roasted about a cup and a half of besan or chickpea flour in the microwave. This is needed to add some body to the koftas or the kebabs. The onions are all set and we can take it out. Oops, I forgot to add the coriander leaves. Not a problem, we can just fry them now with the residual ghee in the pan. Now we are just going to make the kebab mixture. Everything is going to be cooked and then going to be pureed because the original galote kebabs, they are very smooth in texture. First peel the beets. The skins come off fairly easily and if they don't, then just use a knife. Take off the tops and the bottom and cut them in big chunks. Similarly, dice the paneer. For this dish, you can actually easily substitute ricotta cheese for paneer. Just make sure that it's not too wet. Grind everything in a smooth paste. Nobody should be able to tell that there is paneer in this kebab. That's the goal. You cannot keep the beetroot a secret, of course. The color is just a giveaway. Transfer to a bowl. I think I need to add a little bit of salt. The roasted beetroots are quite dry. So six tablespoons of the roasted basin is what I have used and that's plenty for this. But if your beetroots are pressure cooked, then they will have a lot more moisture and you will need more as we shall see when we are doing the kofta. Make sure you don't add so much besan that you get a stiff ball. It should be quite loose, but just form a ball as much as possible. I'm going to keep the pan to heat while I make the kebab balls. I did leave the a mixture sitting for about half an hour, so it has thickened a bit after cooling. 
and it's not quite sticky so actually making these balls is very easy this is not how it will always be check out the kofta ball making to see what you need to do sometimes when the mixture is wet these are easy i've made the balls and they're holding shape so now we get to the frying add enough ghee to coat the entire surface of the pan this is about 2 tablespoons and then lightly dredge the balls in rice flour flatten them and place them in the hot ghee the rice flour helps to make the outside crispy and also helps to make the balls more manageable the actual frying process is quite quick because everything is cooked and the cutlets are quite thin Let them brown on the bottom and then flip them over. Both sides should be browned. The cutlets will be soft, so be gentle. They should not be wet inside, but they will be moist and succulent. All done. I have turned off the gas. Let's check out the texture of one of the kebabs. As you can see, it's a little crisp on the outside, but quite moist on the inside and looks quite inviting okay the kebabs all done we'll start with the kofta soup in the meanwhile if you are enjoying this video do hit the like button please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming videos Okay, let's start with the koftas. The kofta mixture is much the same as that of the galotti kebabs. I'm making a one and a half times the recipe, so I'll have 24 kofti. The main difference is that I'm using the pressure cooked beetroots, which are much better than the roasted beetroots. So I'll go a little slower over that part, but otherwise I'm just going to run through the process of making the mixture. Fry the whole spices, onions and seasonings. This time I forgot to put the whole spices first. I'm just going to add them later. I don't think it matters a whole lot. We are ready to make the mixture. You can see that the pressure cooked beets have a lot more moisture than the roasted one. This mixture therefore is a bit stickier and hard to form a ball. I also need a lot more um, roasted basin. I've actually added one cup which is proportionately more than what I should have put if they were roasted. I've just put some of it in the mixie. This mixture is about right. It's a little loose, but I don't want to add too much basin because it'll just become like one big lump and that's not what we want. We want the ball to be quite moist inside and soft. We can form a ball, not a problem, and that's what we're going to do now. First, I'm just going to make the lumps as I call them. I'm not going to roll it into a smooth ball. I'm going to make enough lumps for one batch of kofta. So I've set my appe pan to heat while I roll the balls. This works very well for stovetop cooking without deep frying, which is the traditional way to make koftas. An air fryer or a small convection toaster oven will also work. Now I'm making the balls and I have to wet the palms again. So roll a ball between your wet palms and then lightly dredge it in rice flour and drop it into the cavity of the appe pan. Make sure you don't have too much mixture stuck to the hand, then more and more will stick. 
if the balls are holding the shape well as these actually are then you can just make all nine together and drop them in but if they are very loose then you have to roll one and drop one which is not the most efficient the frying part is easy the pan was a bit hot so i have temporarily turned off the gas and i'm going to drizzle each of the koftas with ghee on top when the undersides are crisp and they will brown a bit use a small spoon to flip them over if they do break don't worry we can put them back together again when they are still warm cover for about 30 to 40 seconds All done. Just set them aside. Now we can start on the gravy. It doesn't take very long, so I would suggest you do it not much before uh, serving. But you can do this prep before. Whisk the cream and yogurt well. You can also use milk if you want for a less rich gravy. Whisk it well so you don't have any lumps. Add a few dry seasonings, just the salt, garam masala, pepper, and set aside. fresh seasonings the garlic coriander and green chilies i'm going to just fry in unsalted butter and this too you can make ahead of time and keep so that just before serving you just need to cook the cream and yogurt mixture depending on the quantity it will take some time but not more than 10 minutes start with low heat and then you add the yogurt mixture a little at a time mix it in and then add the next batch so that it doesn't curdle and the whole gravy doesn't split because mind you i have not added any besan or anything to thicken the gravy it's not needed and as you add more of the mixture you can slowly increase the heat and you can also put more at a time it doesn't have to be just two tablespoons you know that will take a long time as the heat increases the gravy will start simmering never let it get to high heat because it will burn but medium to medium high is good just keep stirring if you have put milk you will have to do this for a longer time and when it's reduced sufficiently the gravy is done the gravy is ready and so are the koftas let's put the dish together this has to be done at the last minute if you put the koftas in the gravy and then keep it like that for a while you will be left with the pinkish gravy and the koftas we want to keep that contrast of the white gravy with the red koftas and so warm up the gravy put it in your serving dish and drop in the koftas literally at the table If the koftas have been made well before and they're a little cold, warm them in the microwave just a tad bit, and that's it. You're ready to serve. Serve it with roti or with rice. Okay, that's it for our video dishes. Next, you can check out this chicken tikka recipe uh, video right here. Don't forget to make some extra so that you can put it in the white gravy and serve your family an unusual dish the next day. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching.